Well hello and welcome back to the third instalment of my series on colour for Emma Connects and this time I will be talking about what is perhaps uh, the most divisive colour of them all, the colour yellow. Now yellow is pretty much the most visible colour in the spectrum at least for human eyes and that is why we use it to attract attention whether it's with high visibility vests or hazard signs or tennis balls or street lamps. But yellow's most uh, important symbolic partner through history has undoubtedly been another source of light, the sun of course. And from a very early age children identify the sun as yellow and they draw it as yellow. But of course in reality the sun isn't yellow at all. Theoretically in fact it's white because it emits all wavelengths of light. It only briefly appears yellow when it's low in the sky and the atmosphere filters the other colours away from it and then of course it turns orange, finally magenta and then disappears beneath the horizon. Now this connection to the sun, physically inaccurate though it may be, is one of the reasons why yellow and yellowish things have long been revered around the world. You can think for instance of gold which is constantly connected to the sun and of course its colour yellow. You can think of saffron, you can think of the great Chinese pigment orpiment. Now in India the most widely used and widely admired yellow pigment is turmeric which of course we also use as a spice though nowadays you can find it in hipster flat whites and cold pressed juices around the world. Now many Indian communities still smear this auspicious colour over mothers and babies at birth. They bury it with their dead and they splash it over the bride and the groom and ceremonial spaces and matrimonial homes during weddings. Now in some parts of India, in Tamil Nadu for instance, they even use turmeric to make effigies of Ganesh which they believe will bring them good luck. So yellow has all these wonderful, positive, auspicious connections associated with light and the sun, but it also has some less positive associations. Yellow is the colour that many materials turn when they die, when they fade, when they get stained, when they go off. It's the colour of urine and other unpleasant bodily fluids and processes. And for this reason, yellow has for a long time been linked to decay, to the abject and to the unwanted and it has been used to identify and stigmatise members of society. So artists often depicted Judas who of course famously betrayed Christ in yellow. From ancient Greece and Rome prostitutes were made to wear yellow. Uh, so were uh, concubines, uh, debtors, uh, lepers, heretics and of course most notoriously Jews. Now from the 13th century through to about the 16th century, a sequence of laws around Europe decreed that Jews had to be marked out by brightly coloured hats or other symbols. Sometimes they were red, but normally they were yellow because yellow was very easy to see. And of course in the 20th century, uh, the Nazi party revived that tradition when insisted that all Jews had to wear yellow stars on their clothes. But if we can set aside these implications, good and bad, positive and negative, it is worth enjoying, just to finish off, the fantastic array of yellows in art. From Turner's glorious sons, to Vincent van Gogh's wheat fields, to one of my favourite paintings with yellow, František Kupka's self-portrait, and of course Olafur Eliasson's wonderful installation at Tate Modern back in 2003 when he bathed the whole turbine hall with yellow light making it seem as though the sun had actually risen indoors. Though of course at this particularly wonderful uh, time of year you might be spending more time looking at the flavonoid and carotenoid pigments that are making spring flowers yellow all around us. Now I'm out of time right now so join me next month when I'll be talking to you about the colour blue.